Welcome back, everyone, to the Cube's live coverage here at Boomi World in Denver, Colorado. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube. We're here at the end of day two as we're getting all the news from the big keynote. We got Ed, who's back at the product chief product officer, is back on the Cube. Good to see you again, Ed. Good we to have the famous Keith Brandley, who's the VP of IT and Security at Nature Fresh Farms. Been on the Cube before. <laughs> Been part of a documentary uh, on our on the Cube channel. Uh, Keith, great to see you again in person. Um, you're famous in the Cube uh, offices. I'm just here. I keep telling everybody, ever since you tell me that, I'm just here to be here, enjoy the atmosphere, get to meet all the people here that do does Boomi here now, and it's just a great thing to do. Ed is the Boomi, key, he's got the keys to the king, he's running the product product roadmap, and yeah. now with the, the acquisitions and API management, um, and all the product work that they have on the pipelining and integration of data, they are well positioned to kind of take this data to the next level, as a customer, you guys are doing a lot of work. Obviously, I led you in a documentary around bringing tech to smart um, agriculture. Yeah. Give a quick uh, description of what you guys are do, you guys do, and how IT is evolving for you, and how you're innovating at Nature Fresh Farms. And then we'll get into it. Yep. So Nature Fresh Farms, we're a 250 acre greenhouse that grows bell peppers, tomatoes, and cucumbers. And when we first started looking at ourselves internally, we had to solve a problem that was actually a very basic problem, an accounting problem and we kind of talked about it, and how to match invoices to packing slips, and doing stuff like that. So we started to look for a middleware, and Boomi just, uh, an iPass popped right at us and said, this is what we got to do. So we actually created an automated system, and this system allowed us to scan an invoice in, match it to our ERP, that's fun. do OCR of what we're getting, match the, sh the shipping list, and automate a process that was very complicated to everybody. Like very complicated, very time consuming, and truthfully, almost hostile at time because who lost this paper? Who lost that paper? It's always a funny thing, but who lost the paper? It goes from, goes from back and forth to one place. But when we implemented Boomi, it allowed us to just basically go paperless, which is a great thing to do, and then it also allowed us to get rid of that hostility, break down those silos of where we don't want to work with somebody because we don't seem to be able to talk to them and it made it so much better as a product for us. And it's funny, and as I was talking to Ed earlier, Boomi has just kind of grown its tentacles out. You know, it's grown into our temporary foreign labor worker program and housing and stuff like that. Uh, moving information from not only our um, labor management system, but our, to our um, accounting system. And it just seems to be that key element that allows us to move back and forth all the time. So success is, got, is contagious. Yep. I mean, you, you, when you take a manual process, which by the way, there's a lot of grunt work involved, moving yep. paper, but then again, you have different departments. If something goes wrong, it's the other guy's problem, another fault department. Yep. Not my, no, I, you, I dropped it off. No, you didn't. Where's the, so all that goes away. Yep, it all went away, it all made it so smooth. Productivity went up. Productivity went up, and here's the other thing too, accountability was so much easier now. Now it was a very manual process where we knew exactly who approved this invoice, who did it, <laughs> and uh, it was a great feeling actually the first year that after we did this that our auditors came in and said, hey, this is a great system, we love how you guys have done this now, and it made it so much smoother. You know, and it's, it's a little things like that that made us really appreciate how Boomi yeah. allowed us to start to do this and start to think outside the box and give us the tools that we needed to do this. And this is a classic case of pre-Gen AI hype, world changing kind of vibe, which by the way, it's a new category, it's Gen AI, it's not pre-programmed, but pre-Gen AI, everything had to be set up and provisioned and whatnot. If you do the work on automation and have that data, you're in position to do that. This is a great example where the success is contagious. How does that, how does that happen? Can you take us through like, inside an organization, and if you can share some insights too. Okay, you manual, it's a good manual process, okay. Yeah. Does it work just like go around like, hey, my life's better, what tool did you use, and what tentacles are you guys expanding out? Yeah, so from a Boomi deployment perspective, it's all music to my ears, by the way. Because the way we go about it, we, you know, we're not fans of technology, our own technology for technology's sake. We literally go in with a customer and we find value and where we can automate, integrate things for our customers. We earn the right to continue expanding and providing more value to the organization. It sounds not? like it should be, but that's what we, we, we take pride in doing. So as we garner more and more success with our customers, we earn that right. And with Gen AI projects and things coming up, we become in many, as the tentacles spread out, it becomes a neural network within a, an organization's backbone that we can then tap into to then help with AI, Gen AI projects. 
on your side, what's the innovation like inside uh, for now? What's on the plan? Because it's a classic digital transformation. What you described was you digitize things, you automate it. Okay, yep. great, Bloomy's there, iPads, okay, check. Now you got Gener AI here. Yep. What's next? What's next for us, you know, is a lot of using the tools that I think will start to expand out. Like one of the things that we did so differently, and, and it was a great part of our deployment, was we not only trained our development team on the Boomi platform, but we also encouraged the accounting and the account, a team and the a, a purchase officing team to join and learn how the platform works. So they actually have a general understanding of it. And with the generative AI, with the AI within the Boomi platform now, I can see them start to be able to dabble into to say, hey, I do want to change this full. I want to change this integration a little bit. I want to add this. So that's where I see the next greatest thing happening for us is you're kind of taking a little bit more away from the core DevOps team to do things. You're going to letting other people have that power and that low code model that Boomi has given us allows us to, for these people to do it that. It might unleash some creativity too. Yep. I mean, you're enabling democratization. Yep. That's what you're basically saying. Yeah, because we, we basically like, HR is basically has, it's, it's kind of funny, they have their own basically two Boomi people that do Boomi every day. They, they expand it, they do something new, they do onboarding, they do transfers and it's just like all of a sudden, I'm like, I knew they were doing something, but they actually got this done. And, <laughs> and they don't need to rely on a DevOps team to do this. They can just go and do it again. But that low code, I mean, that integration makes it great. Keith, you must get called on by all the vendors. And I don't want to put vendor negative, vend spin on a vendor because you're a vendor. But boom, he's got a good reputation. So you, I can say it in front of you. Um, a lot of times when they, with their conjecture, they say it doesn't always happen, yeah. right? So when you hear like, I'm, everyone's training on Boomi, the, my te tell sign or test around BS <laughs> from a vendor is, if they say they got a platform, it better be enabling. Yeah. Okay, one, so it has to enable value proposition. And that could be many things. It could be for developers, it could be creativity for democratization. And then the foundation has to have no cracks. It's got to be solid foundationally. So the test is, Foundation, or at least they're aware that there's some work to do and that they identified that they're working on. Okay, solid foundation, but enablement. But now we're at disruptive enablement. So we got now a new world where what Gen AI is doing is it's disrupting other processes yeah. with generating stuff. So what I'm trying to do is figure out where that disruptive enabler is. Can you guys share your insights from a Boomi perspective, also from as a customer? Because there's a lot of stuff coming at you. How do you field in, how do you squint through the BS? Keith, we'll start with you. And then what's that disruption of the enablement? I mean, enablement is great, but like, yeah. You know, it, what it's, goes away? Yeah, I know, it's a really hard one to answer. It really is, <laughs> it's an, I, I admit to you it is. I'm thinking about my head, I'm like, wow, you really got me on that one. But again, I guess, you know, it's an ever-changing field. And everybody wants to have that new, latest, greatest tool. And I go back to us as a company. We formed ourselves as a great company, built a great base, and we've made that platform at the bottom to hold us through. It doesn't matter what happens on the top levels. The foundation will keep us through. So that's where I think that we will survive. So you're a big believer in build the good foundation. Yeah, build the foundation, and the rest will all come in the weird in the wind and we'll do things and that might change and that might shift, but you know what, you got the foundation how to do it. And like our foundation is data and our foundation is integration. And that's what we use the Boomi platform for. So I, I think everybody can say we're going to do this, that, and the other thing. We can have them come in and out and do anything, but we have that foundation there. That's good. It can mess the foundation up. Yeah. And what's your take on disruptive enablement? Because that's a concept that implies disruption could be viewed as be displacing something, AI does that, we know that. Uh, and, I, and I'm, I'm not talking about jobs, I'm about like, things go away, could be automated. Like automation means you're disrupting a process, in your case, manual process turns into greatness. What disruptions do you see that will be enabling so, opportunities? So financially, it's, it's moments like these where I get to listen to, listen to our, our customers and, and hear them and then in the concept of disruption and enabling. So, <laughs> I am now hearing from you, okay, your accounting team is using the Boomi platform to do integrations and they're dabbling in that. Something I want to disrupt. Today, Gen AI is for the, the techies. Gen AI, these stacks, large language models, et cetera. Your accountant has no idea, I guarantee, unless you've got some super accountant, has no idea how to stand up a large language model, train it, ground it, et cetera. 
But I want to, a goal of mine now is I want your accountant who can speak Boomi, who's learning Boomi and understands that, to be able to participate in the Gen AI space. Give that accountant the ability to empower them to be just as creative in automating their own business processes, making their lives better by using the Boomi platform, leveraging yeah. generative Tech, generative AI and whatever they need. Maybe they would like to automate something for themselves and do that. I'm not about replacing the accountant and what that accountant wants so to do. So of use interfacing yeah. in with yeah. the technology so you have to go to some console yeah. and figure out that it's got X billions of parameters trained on. Yes. Just click, 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 solve my problem. Okay, in the final three minutes we have left, I want to get to a, a comment that we were talking about before we came on camera, which is our when we grew into the industry and we were all young guns, breaking our, our 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 teeth on IT yeah. back in the day. <laughs> Legacy systems now with Gen AI and now abstractions and now open source, you can do a lot with abstracting away complexity. You don't have to rip and replace. You can um, do things faster. Um, you have now AI and these agents coming out that are connectivity based as you guys are going down this road. You have a lot of these quote minions as you even said them on the stage, like working on a specialist on our behalf. Where is the, um, opportunity going to be for integrating and not having to throw away old to bring in the new. Like you can keep legacy. We're hearing a lot of people say, hey, I got, I trained this LLM COBOL. So I now have an agent that actually knows the entire COBOL language. And so now we're adding additions to, it's, it's coding COBOL, running Lambda functions into Amazon. Like, okay, that's cool. Like that was not possible without AI yeah. as an example. But where are you starting to see legacy hang around? Was why? Fix it if it's not broke, if you can add, or how do you deal with legacy? I guess the question is, how does legacy that's, that's, manage, how do you manage legacy stuff in the promise of Gen AI? What's your, Keith, what's your what's your take on this one? I yeah, think, you know what, with Gen AI, it really is changing the industry. Everybody's talking about it, everybody's doing it. The thing that we focus on is that we want to build an outer platform that our users can use, and they focus on that, not on the core, let, let IT, let the experts deal with that core infrastructure that is legacy that nobody wants to ever touch again and build a platform on the outside that allows them to do their generative work. It's still going to be there. I think it's always going to be there. It's never going to go away, uh, especially in our industries. I think we have so many things that just work, yeah. but it's interfacing into it that's going to be, the, that, that has always made it easier. Awesome. I would just say we've understood and embraced the the transformation from legacy to to cloud or or needing to maintain some legacy systems since the beginning of when we invented the Atom, our runtime technology with Boomi. We are hybrid, multi-cloud. We yeah. were doing that before they were buzzwords. Yeah. Hybrid cloud, multi-cloud. So we are in a perfect position um, to help customers modernize, even if they need to. I will never advise someone to leave, yeah. leave a legacy system just to leave one, but if they have to, there are those reasons for doing that. Yeah. Our foundation automatically helps our customers handle those scenarios, particularly in the Gen AI world where we can bridge the gaps in, in getting access to those data sources and or automating with those systems with our technology. I've been covering Boomi for six years. You guys have always been agnostic, multi-vendor, natural progression to multi-cloud or super cloud as we call it. You got cloud on-premise edge, multiple environments. It's distributed computing is what it is. Yeah. I mean, all the game is still the same, it's just different. Yeah. The question I have for you, Keith, is because you're, you're in the trenches every day, you said data is your core thing. Yeah. Data now is the crown jewel of generative AI. Without data, you, and without an information architecture around data, you have no, you have no AI, yeah. right? And, and APIs are now part we hear that. It's a fuck of How do you look at the future from your lens perspective? As you look at putting all the pitches aside, as you start thinking, my crown jewels are my data, my workflows. Yep. No, it's about you got to chart a path to the future. You got to navigate the AI landscape. What, what's your mind, mindset like? Um, and what are some of the guiding principles that, that take you, that will take you forward comfortably and confidently? <laughs> uh, I always have the confidence to say, you never know what data is going to be valid in the future. <laughs> um, and I think that the biggest thing that you can take away from doing anything AI is that it is new and inventive and you learn more from failure than, than actually winning something. In our industry, the agriculture, I see AI making us grow more per meter square than we ever have, and now turning the whole farming industry into something that was very passive in the past to a totally proactive field. Uh, and you're happy with Boomi, these guys doing a good job for you? Oh yeah, Boomi's been there for us, they've been a great partner. From the first day we signed the contract them, they have been there to help us through the whole process. 
All right. On that note, thanks for coming on. Great to see you. Yep. Thank you. Ed, you get the keys to the king. We're looking for next time for Chad. I want to hear that roadmap. Some of those things popping off the roadmap. Uh -huh. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for coming on. Guys, yep, thanks thank so much. You. Thank you. Okay, that's theCUBE. I'm John Furrier here at theCUBE. We have one more segment here in day two. Tomorrow we'll be here as well, live from Denver, Boomi World. We'll be right back.